Hi, I'm Kevin Keegan, and you're listening to the Football Ramble. Do you know, yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. But I happen to think if, if John Motson can still continue, then Barry Davis can still continue. Oh, no, oh, Barry yeah, Davis. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, but Barry Davis does other sports. Right. That's a stay. He does like he does yeah, hockey. He does skating and hockey. What, what's and the point of getting back in football? football? Yeah, I get back at ro- Let's start a campaign. Yeah, write it down. Jim. You're, you're the main writer. You're, you're, the, you're the letter writer. You write it down and then and Barry get, Davis. Start a campaign. Back. But you know Brian Moore's <laughs> final bit of commentary. Oh, by the way, I just like to plug. Barry Davis's book, his autobiography, is coming out, and that is my book of the week. <laughs> <laughs> That's an early shout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a big shout. Um, are you his grandson? I should be. But anyway, I brought it up, so it's fair enough. But Brian Moore's final piece of commentary was, I believe, in a penalty England penalty shootout, and he and he just he signed off in the most outrageous <laughs> way by saying to Kevin Keegan, "Will he score, Kevin?" Oh, and Kevin yeah, terrible. <laughs> Kevin went, Yes. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's just a terrible. Of all piece. the people to ask as yeah. well. What a question as well. Oh, actually, yeah. I'm gonna. Kevin Keegan has been sold up the river there. If he says no, yeah, yeah, everyone's like, "That's a bit out of order." Yeah. If he says yes, he looks like a twat. No win. No win. No. Throwing his weight around. Yeah, Greasy no, locks as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, well. You don't, you don't like that, do you, Marcus? Oh, <laughs> tell you. It. This is a disgrace. But um, Newcastle. Do you know that <laughs> in his last game as a player, Kevin Keegan left the Newcastle pitch in a helicopter in his <laughs> kit, different class. <laughs> Did he really? Yeah. Well, some kind of escape yeah, it was. He <laughs> went to Hamburg, <laughs> was, uh, No, I think it was his last game as a footballer. <laughs> oh, right. It was like his retirement. He's and playing for Hamburg. Because ham- he loves mental shit like that. Was that's what he manager, did, that's how he did it. No, as a player. As a player. And as a manager. I know. Yeah, I've taken this club as far as I can go. Yeah, See ya, yeah. boys. Yeah. That's that's how he got the job. He just turned up on the pitch yeah. in his helicopter <laughs> this time. Please, please <laughs> let me come back. Well, I don't know why he's from Yorkshire. Yeah. <laughs> so at least wait for he's from Yorkshire, isn't he? That'd be <laughs> right. Yeah. The football's been chopped up and the propellers and everything now. <laughs> Since, did he like, disappear with like some kind of like the trophies in him and just like, disappear out of Newcastle? I don't think they had any trophies. Some kind of. Did Freddie Shepard come out of the director's box and go, get to the chopper? <laughs> was he? Yeah. Is he like diet, like some kind of diehard kind of thing? Was he hanging yeah. on this to the um? <laughs> oh, how can the same well, stuff happen to the same bloke twice? Yeah. <laughs> well, Shepard, it would never take off. <laughs> Maybe he was just playing for Hamburg that evening. <laughs> he had to get yeah. it quickly, you know, stay in his kit. It's a bit sharpish. Freddie Shepard went. Oh, I would love it if that helicopter crashed. Oh, I'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, fortunately, it is a podcast, not a vodcast. Um, chaps. Last weekend, Benitez and Rafa Benitez and uh, big Sammy Allardyce were at it again. Feuding, that is. Um, And that is the inspiration for the opening question. What is your favourite feud between managers, two managers, I would imagine? Unless you can think of a third party. Uh, James or Jim, I want you to go first for a change. Well, I think my favourite one ever um, is when Mm. old Keggy Keegan just couldn't (laughs) hack... Alex Ferguson's mind games is very simple mind games of just slightly criticising teams before they have a play b- before they have a play <laughs> <laughs> have a good play today before, before they have a game and uh, j- j- obviously you know what I'm talking about the whole I will love it if we beat them sort of yep. fiasco and he yep. just couldn't deal with the most sort of simple <laughs> pressure at the top of the table with Ferguson just sort of exerting his, his mind games it was, it was brilliant to watch mm-hmm. I watch it every now and then just to remember quite how mental it was you don't see that sort of breakdown anymore that was sort of less a feud more, sort of more that Ferguson just amusing himself. Yeah, <laughs> Keegan just <laughs> <going> absolutely <laughs> mental. That, for the record, that is actually in my top three favourite moments ever in football. Mm. Really? Oh, amazing stuff! Come no, on, it's it's just to see a man breaking voice. So he's out of order there. Yeah, to see a man emotionally and psychologically unravel live yeah. on television. Come I on, I would love it. Not <laughs> Kevin Keegan. No, fair enough. You like him, don't you? We all well, like well, him. Exactly. But he's a good man. He's a good. Man. He's a good man, but he's hilarious as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, Luke. What- because for a period that was just normal. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That was a tackle. Yeah. Um, well, let's go back um, to the history books. Who, gentlemen, can you remember was a player who punched another? James, you're looking beautiful. I'd like you to Thank go. Thank you. Um, I'm going to go. 
Let's just let the footballers go at it. Oh dear. Uh, right, well, we'd better move on to Pete's answer now. Well, mine's in the 70s as well. It's, uh, right. it's Keegan Bremner. Oh, yeah. and another classic. Unexpected. Liverpool, Liverpool leads. But it was just a beautiful man fighting an ugly little law. Keegan's so unlikely. <laughs> yeah, it's not convinced anyone, Ke- Keggy. This is not happening. <laughs> Ke- Keegan, of course, they both got sent off. Mm. And then Keegan took his top off to reveal a magnificent top. Oh, oh, yeah. hairy but, chest. Uh, yeah. No, no, not hairy. He's, he was hairy, wasn't he? Oh, no. Glistening with sweat and muscle. Yeah, was there was tons. a bit of hair on there, yeah. wasn't he? No. no. Why am I thinking about his hairy You're chest? You're looking at me, yeah. that's why. I'm thinking yeah. of gigs, maybe. The Fantasy Football League reenactment of that was absolutely brilliant oh, was it? I forget who the goalkeeper was in the background of the shot but he was a hairy man and in their version they just had a bloke with a monkey suit head on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. excellent yeah. Um, no Keegan says to the referee when he gets sent off he goes what I've not done f- all I've been it twice <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the most Keegan thing yeah. in the world yeah. 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 It's, it's even wonderful. though Keegan's done quite a lot as a footballer especially and he's yeah. a, a decent career he just does still strike you as the unluckiest man yeah, yeah. he's the sort of man who would tread in a bucket every yeah. day I will, I will love it if he t- stubs his toe yeah. Yeah. he stops hitting me do you remember <laughs> he's like, he he like get, Frank Spencer didn't he, <laughs> caught, didn't he get caught in a lay by once didn't he, wasn't he asleep oh, in a car or something in two lads uh, rings a bell just yeah. started getting well, his perennial what about the on the bike? <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> it's it's like superstars. Someone... In the 1970s, it was a, a, a sort of game show with all the sports stars, I think some famous celebrities as well, yeah. competing in a loads of different sporting rounds. That should yeah. happen. And Keegan's now. obviously really competitive. Yeah. And he gets on this racing bike. It's obviously really hard to ride <laughs> on this really horrific gravel track <laughs> and just massively stacks it <laughs> massively oh, stacks yeah, it yeah. he's probably down he's covered in gravel he's man down oh. he's covered in gravel <laughs> it's class and, it, and thus he didn't play in World Cup 82 <laughs> no exactly <laughs> no wonder he made That's a clown true. circus yeah. 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 confetti everywhere blimey uh, Luke I'll go. it's profile time Ooh. oh yeah <laughs> 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 Oh dear, oh dear. This man, his first name is Joseph, um, but you'll know him by his second name. Fritzel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I set myself up for that. Mm. Uh, it's Kevin Keegan! Oh, hey. Keggy! Keggy! Keggy. 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 Kev. <laughs> Can you believe it? Yeah. Yes, the Can clown you believe prince. your luck? <laughs> yeah. We're a... Kevin... Oh, King Kev. It's time to redress the balance because he was actually a really good player. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And we've mentioned this many times, you know, that he doesn't get the credit as a player that, you know, he should have done because of his hilarious sort of... Personal life. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, just character. No, but he is also a magnificent man. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm sure he's a lovely bloke. What are you laughing at? The bit when he fell off the bike in Superstars. Well, yeah. I'm going to get to that. He got that beaten is, in a car. No, no, no. That is specifically what I'm laughing he at. Was he, was asleep, <laughs> he was asleep in a lay-by and he got punched. <laughs> Was that anything to do with the Chuckle Brothers? What? Uh, at one point, one of the Chuckle Brothers got caught in a lay-by. I wonder if it was the same thing. Don't say caught in a lay-by. <laughs> that suggests... Yeah. That suggests... I'm going to put a super injunction out in your mouth. <laughs> Barry Chuckle. <laughs> Barry Chuckle. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's one minute into the profile, we're already comparing it to one of the Chuckle Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> and also, casting aspersions towards one of the same Chuckle yeah. Brothers. Can I? Um, now, the Liverpool didn't win a trophy in his first season, but that all changed very quickly in the 72-73 season. They won the league and UEFA Cup. The UEFA Cup. Bring it back when place. it was good. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, in the following season, they won the FA Cup. Then, at the start of the 1974-75 season, he played in the Charity Shield, as it was known then, against Leeds. And he got into a spot of bother with Billy Bremner. <laughs> Which is unlike a team playing against Leeds. I'm sure you're <laughs> in the 70s. I'm sure you can agree. I, I, I never forget... Well, no, I don't remember it because I wasn't there. But um, it was seeing the uh, <laughs> footage again on, on uh, video... It was because uh, they would have been matched up because Keegan was sort of like in the hole, sort of mm, slash second striker yeah. sort of player, and Bremner was a hard, hard midfielder, wasn't it? Um, yeah. So well, Bremner was forward thinking as well, but yeah, I'm sure they matched them up just for just for the lols, and they got them. Um, <laughs> they uh, Bremner punched Keegan, didn't he? And that, Keegan, oh, how can you sleep at night? <laughs> yeah. If, if at any point in your life you've done that, yeah, very it's like it's that's worse than kicking that out to death. <laughs> well, well Keegan um, also very similar <laughs> Keegan got sent off and you can see him mouth when he gets sent off he goes oh come on Bob man he <laughs> I, 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 just goes, I haven't done f- oh I've been hit twice <laughs> <laughs> I've a red I've a red as well oh god he's the most slapstick great <laughs> yeah, yeah. of any sport you, ever you once described him as the unluckiest man in the world yeah, with he, regards to such things <laughs> and I think you're absolutely spot on I mean obviously not that unlucky he's won the, the whole host of well no but they, they, you know that's where he's created his own luck isn't it just yeah, yeah. circumstance 
you know, yeah. conspires against him. I remember, he's got, I remember he's, got, he's got a, a be- I don't remember, but I yeah. remember he said his favourite goal was this beautiful bass little kick. I think it was in the UEFA Cup, right. and it was like it was about thirty yards out. It was incredible. Yeah, ruled out, uh, ruled uh, <laughs> offside, ruled offside. Oh. <laughs> He was so annoyed, and he knew. And he said he knew at the time that would be the best goal he ever scored, and it will down. But that's what it, but that, it is. Like, it's, it's, a, it's a running theme, and that's why that when he, in the 1970s TV show Superstars, mm. where, he, where they put sports stars and famous people, and if, you, if you're not familiar with it, they had to take on like physical challenges. Yeah. Um, now, Kevin Keegan, it was like a bike race against someone else. I forget who it was around a track. Doesn't matter. And Kevin Keegan <laughs> fell off his bike just because he was trying so hard. <laughs> he, he was trying so hard that the, the whole bike was shaking. Yeah. <laughs> and just completely stacked it and also the reason it ties in with the theme for being really, un- really unlucky is that he looked like he really really hurt himself <laughs> yeah. he, he was like gravel marks all over him <laughs> oh bless him oh Keegs um, hey. in he comes <laughs> <laughs> um now, interestingly enough, after that season, he gave a season's notice saying uh, he was going to join Hamburg. Mm. Which is quite a bold thing to do. Um, and he's too honest there. Yeah, he's a very honest man, mm. Keegan. And uh, <laughs> why is that funny? It just is, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Luke is d- d- making this for our descendants of fast. Like, Keegan you, is a superb player. I know, I know. I'm a but genetic. you could sell him magic beans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I've some, some have. It's Newcastle, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, you're absolutely right. Yeah, well done. Good protest knowledge. <laughs> and now it's time for a profile, ladies and gentlemen. Yay. Profile time, as it's known. Now, we've done some profiles before. And, Loads you know, of them. We've done, They're we, on the website. We've done, <laughs> they are on the footballramble.com. We've done some <laughs> which, which mean some to others. You know, Jim, if there's maybe an Arsenal player, we've done it means a lot. Luke, Robert Prozanecki meant a lot to you this is all about Pete Donaldson today mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen because we are doing the entertainers it's the Newcastle United team of the mid 90s oh. oh. it's Pete's youth going into the dwarf <laughs> you shouldn't have <laughs> ah. um, I love this quote from um, Freddie Shepherd. he said at the time Kevin was in Marbella playing golf with showbiz people like Sean Connery every day but Freddie Fletcher persuaded him off his own back to come into football He'd and not managed before any kid. Yeah, no. and I mean, it, it, but that's it. Though, they just it? assumed he would be what he genuinely did go on to be. But, yeah. but isn't it? That's yeah. the, that was the start of it. Yeah, that was the start. Keegan was playing golf in Spain. They went along with Sean said, Connery for yeah. some reason. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Connery was living in uh, southern Spain at the time. Well, well, if I went, went to Spain, Spain yeah. I wouldn't just end up playing golf with Sean Connery, would Kevin I? Kevin Keegan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, like Keggy. Uh, You've never left a professional football pitch in a helicopter. All right, all right. You've got the hair. Rubbing it in. I've been punched in a lay-by but I'm not Kevin Keegan yeah. <laughs> you fall off a bike at high speed but you're not Kevin Keegan <laughs> I so would love it if we beat them, but no, I'm not. Had the, you've, had, you've had the Keegan profile. You've had again! You had the Keegan profile to get it all out, all right? And you had a bit of a go at Les Fernand, I should oh. recall, so I'll not have this. I will not have oh, you yeah. spoil this. He will not have it. He will oh, not have it. Just gotta trip that memory lane, Pete. That's <laughs> Pete, you're up against it. Like the the big thing, the the, the, the most telling um, <laughs> phrase, the most telling sort of thing, uh, 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 kind of anecdote I can sort of remember from the time was that Kevin Keegan once uh, shouted at John Beresford to do some defending, a fullback, yeah. and uh, Beresford told him to fuck off. <laughs> 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 so, so Keegan, is there any so, other manager in the so, world that would take that? Yeah. Well, no, no, okay, well, Keegan, Keegan, yeah. well, Keegan subbed him off. I mean, like Beresford always sort of it goes back and sort of says that oh, the one the one yeah. manager that um, always holds grudges was Kevin Keegan, and he always <laughs> you got to tell me a fuck off, are you again, John? Yeah, no, yeah. Mister. That's good. Yeah, yeah, well, Keegan would deal with that. Chat. <laughs> Bollocks, yeah. Dad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, profile time. Yes. Yeah. Switch on. Get your heads on, eh? Hey, come on, come on. Jimbo, you're up for this, yes? A bit. Pride and ball, Jimbo. It's one of Arsenal's most loved players in the history of the club. It's Charlie George. Charlie George. Good old Charlie George, mm. as the song went. Very simple. Well, yeah, exactly. And he was he was a controversial figure, as, as we said before. And uh, uh, fortunately, that goal lives more prominently in the memory than some of the other things he did, as George said himself. Fans will ask me about the flicking of the V sign to supporters or telling some linesman to stick his flag up his ass. But most of the time, though, <laughs> it's that cup final goal against Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> that was when he was at Derby. Oh, no, no. No, he, it was he against the t- Derby fans. And then he signed it? for them. That's yeah. right, yeah. yeah. Well, he, he had a few bust ups with the manager. Um, and uh, I know that. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> Can it please be me who says it? Go on. Headbutt Kevin Keegan. 
<laughs> the hallmark of a demon that's all for my entrance. This is the only reason he's in there, isn't it? You just, you just the way back gym? from Keegan's <laughs> Wikipedia page I just Googled, every time. I just Google Keegan. It wasn't in the, in the lay by. <laughs> well, we don't know that it wasn't Charlie George who did it that time. <laughs> that's true, yeah. No one knows who it was. Yeah. Keegan knows. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember it does. I've been punched twice. <laughs> oh, Pete's not here to rein us in. Uh, well, it would normally be me. No, like, not... can't beat him, join him, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, oh dear, teach him to lose the last England game at Wembley. Yeah. In the old Wembley. <laughs> or fall asleep in a lay-by. Was yeah. <laughs> the guy trying to wake him up? In a way. Or get in a fight with Billy Bremner. <laughs> or fall off a bike on Superstars. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's happened again. Kegels. <laughs> Why is Kevin Keegan so funny? <laughs> right, come on. Oh, Charlie George, we doing here. Why did I include that? I had it written down and away about it. It was always going to be brought up. I've been looking forward to it all day. Oh, dear. Well, oh, I've been God. keeping pretty quiet up till now. So. <laughs> Right. <laughs> oh dear. Right. And yeah, basically try to talk his way out of the job. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Another a final honourable mention for moment of 2015. Although it was something that happened way, way, way before 2015, but it, it came to our attention in 2015. Was from Big Pavel Cernicek, former Newcastle oh, United goalkeeper. D- another dig. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, well, he's released his autobiography, and he's uh, he's quite um, candid. He is. <laughs> he's was... quite candid, but he, in a way, he's not said anything I didn't already suspect. <laughs> <laughs> Newcastle were obviously in the title running against Manchester United. They were leading the way and they were cruising to a title. They went to Liverpool and Anfield, lost 4-3. It was a huge game of importance, but it was also deemed one of the greatest games in the Premier League's history. I think it probably was the greatest game. Or Premiership. Yeah, I think it it probably was the best, I'd say. Right, Mm. Okay. Pavel Cernicek was in goal for Newcastle United. He was a very good goalkeeper as well. And it came out in his autobiography that before the game... As Keegan's G and everybody up and giving a few words of encouragement, as you would as you would need, it's a crucial game. You're away to An- Anfield. It's it's a, it's a tough place to go always, and you need the points to get yourselves in a good position to get over that Premier League line or Premiership uh, winning line. And obviously, Manchester United in goal at the time had Peter Schmeichel, one of the greatest goalkeepers of our times. People would yeah. agree. And as they're just about to take to the field, Kevin Keegan turns to Pavel Sernicek and says something like, "Why can't you be like Peter Schmeichel and win matches for us?" <laughs> In my head, when he was doing that, he was like jogging on the spot and biting his nails. It's like his own worry just coming out. It's just being projected on the sun. With his foot in a bucket. Just before an enormously crucial game, he has a massive dig at his own first choice goalkeeper who's played very well that season. Just before. He doesn't even he doesn't even know it's a dig. No, he yeah. thinks it's a good thing to do. Yeah. Yeah. On you go. Yeah. Th- oh, this will help you. Yeah. To know that you are definitely not the best goalkeeper let, in this league. Let that inspire you. <laughs> I don't even, in, even think we're designed Shaka is not by that point. <laughs> oh dear, but he said so like good. I know Shaka was uh, in goal for like some of the rest of the season, was he? Yeah, what later did, on. What, yeah. what did yeah. Pavel Sarchek actually say? He in just, his autobiography he, he said that. He just said he was like, absolutely crushed, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Like he, he couldn't do anything. He couldn't think yeah. straight. He couldn't concentrate. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what mean... he could do: let four fucking goals. <laughs> <laughs> <in. laughs> <laughs> it as well. Oh, no. No, it was, it, none of them were big clangers, were they? Yeah. He said the only one that he thought he may have done better was with 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 Colin Moore's <laughs> right. <at> the... <laughs> With Colin right I mean, there's there, a which was near post. Yeah. But that one, the thing really. is with Colin it was close range, it was hit hard. I personally wouldn't blame him <laughs> for that. So, regardless of whether there was Had a clanger or not. Had he saved it? <laughs> they, oh, my what, goodness. What do you think he said? <laughs> <laughs> I to- I t- what did I tell you? It's like it's like he just like went, just grabbed a light bulb and jammed it into his hand. Just went, yeah, what? You, can you do it with this? Can you go it with this with a bleeding hand? No, I can't. Oh god! I mean, can you, he's, probably, he's probably come off with Keegan thinking, well, he's, he's ignored my advice there. Yeah. The Keegan estate is hurting. Such a- Pavel Sernicek released his uh, autobiography, so I'm going to give you um, a week in the life of Kevin Keegan. Oh. His diary, all right? A present to us all. Exactly. Bloody looking forward to this, Peter. Exactly. Yeah. So, Monday. Had to take Keith Gillespie to the Royal Infirmary because he'd swallowed a pog. <laughs>
God, why can't my players be more like my best friend Terry McDermott? With his mop of hair and lovely moustache, he really is a fine figure of a man. He won three European Cups and six Division One titles, but when it comes to hunks, my wife says that she prefers Graham Souness, who only has five English League titles to his name. Is she mad? <laughs> Tuesday. Got Coventry at the weekend. I do like their strips. I keep on asking the chairman to switch to Pony. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Pony! I can't see any reason why they can't be as big as Adidas in the next ten years. <laughs> <laughs> their jackets make even Dave Merrington look presentable. It's a big game for us, especially as things have been going of late. People say my dressing room lacks discipline, but that's not true. I caught Barry Venison smoking opium in the lose again. <laughs> Wednesday, Joe Royal rang. He wants to know about the availability of Paul Brayson. I said he's happily married to a PE teacher, the weirdo. What's wrong with hitting the clubs, Joe? With those baby blues, you'll be trapping off in no time, I said. I mean, you know Terry McDermott, but you're still the manager of Everton. Oh, Terry, what's in that gorgeous head of yours? <laughs> trapping off. <laughs> Thursday, Tino's out for Saturday. He says he threw his work permit on the fire thinking it was money. <laughs> Bless him, he must be freezing up here. Mark Hottiger popped in for a chat. Christ, Mark he's Hottiger. Christ, he's looking more like Mark Knopfler by the second. <laughs> I hate Mark Knopfler. I've told John Hall to sell him. <laughs> Friday, light training today. I say light, <laughs> tackles were flying in everywhere. <laughs> Honestly, my team are unhinged. I don't know where this lot get all the anger from, because it ain't from me. I asked developmental coach Nigel Pearson and reserve team coach John Carver, and they didn't know either. <laughs> Saturday, Paul Kitson died. <laughs> we beat Coventry, though. Gordon Strachan really can't cut it as player manager. I'd love that as soon as I get my cast off. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say it. I dropped a bag of sharp sand on me foot. It wasn't even my sharp sand. I was having a whole lady at B&Q. I wish I was as indestructible as Terry D. Oh, Terry. <laughs> Terry D. Monday, dear diary, sorry about not writing an entry on Sunday. The lads found you on the team bus on the way back from the Midlands and Mark Hottiger took great pleasure in counting every time I mentioned Terry. Terry's now not talking to me and Nigel keeps giving me angry looks. Honestly, what a week. Oh. A week in the life of Kevin Keegan. Merry, you, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Purely factual. Yeah, <laughs> purely factual. Colleen or hanging just outside the 18 yard box. Yeah. To okay. slam that bar past Pav. There we are. I, th I think the Christmas party is finished. Yeah, I agree. Let's <laughs> all go home. Thank oh. goodness. <laughs> Sorry that about that. Sorry, I'm just a... imagining that scenario again with, with um, Cernochip just <laughs> having a little thought bubble with Keegan going, <laughs> why can't you be more like Peter Schmeichel as he's bearing well, down? I'm going to be like, oh, fannies. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dearie, dear. Imagine Keegan at uh, having a party as well. He'd be like, oh, I ran out of chocolates, you know, the chocolates at the end of the evening, but so I've got Brussels sprouts instead. <laughs> oh, Kevin, we're all Kevin, Kevin. I'll go on, I'll go on. Imagine, imagine Keegan. Oh, that's yeah, naughty. Good. That's it. That's it. That's all he you need to do. He was a fine Christmas. player. He was a fine player. <laughs> I'm ruined. Yeah. Oh, bless him. Yeah. There we are. Should we end it on that note then? Do you remember he got sent off on the charity shield? Yeah. <laughs> You can imagine if he were hosting a party, like his water would fail that day and he'd be like halfway through shampooing his hair. And he just wouldn't have time to sort it out. And he'd have to get and the then, guests to bring mineral water or something. And then just, just as the party's about to get started, right, the smoke alarm would go off in his house. It's all right, everyone. Right. It's all right. I just need to replace right. the battery. It's only me on fire. <laughs> I'm pressing the button. Good stuff. Uh, that's, a, that's a thigh rubber. That's a, that's a button presser. Yeah. Do you want to do it later or now? Do you want it now? Yeah, we're talking about it's Newcastle. A, it's a, it's a good, it. Yeah, fair dues. It's a good one. Um, hello to Richard Blake, MSC. Blakey. The end. I think that oh, was a... a putting good, that on the end of name. I think that's in his signature, so uh, fair dues. Hearing you talk uh, about Kevin Keegan on an aeroplane a couple of weeks, a, week, <laughs> weeks ago... Last week. Uh, ..reminded me of a story my mum told me. She was an air hostess for BA in the 70s, mm. and she was flying the England team to a game, or rather BA were flying the England team to a game. Uh, she'd just broken up with a boyfriend and was sobbing her eyes out in the aeroplane kitchen about the whole situation. <laughs> Through the curtains then wanders the England captain, none other than Kevin Keegan. Oh, God. <laughs> My mum tries to hide her tears and asks if she can get him anything, but Kevin sees right through this. And accidentally punches her in the face. <laughs> He put, scolds her with a hot coffee. Um, he, puts his arm, he puts his arm around her shoulder, sits her down and says, what's the matter, dear? Why Come is on. she already sitting down? He Let puts him his, read the email. Sure, sure. Shut your fat mouth. <laughs> 
That's he the angriest he's ever been at you. He puts his arm around her shoulder, sits her down and says, what's the matter, dear? Go on, tell Uncle Kev. <laughs> My mum then proceeds to tell, her the, tell him the story for the next hour as Uncle Kev gives her a much-needed shoulder to cry. And oh. I think that technically means that Kevin Keegan is my great uncle. I've not yet decided how I feel about that. Yeah. Captain of your mother's heart. Isn't yeah. that lovely? Captain of all lovely. our hearts, Jim. <laughs> yeah. It is, Forget, that is lovely. And then two Keegan things, right? Our window. Two things. <laughs> two, two things. I'm, I'm just popping to the... Lo- Kevin, that's the wrong door. <laughs> um, two things. Kevin Keegan, England captain... And another thing, lovely boy. Nice man. Yeah. Nice man. It's a shame he definitely lost his luggage. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> definitely lost Every his luggage. Every right to be conceited there as England captain. Yeah. Mm. You wouldn't find John Terry doing that, let me no, tell you that No, you now. bloody wouldn't. Oh. Oh, it's like, it, we Richard have never Blake, ever beautiful. doubted, and we've never said anything on the contrary, that Keegan is a very, very nice man, and he's a very good man. Mm. I, I hope he tried to have a little go in the, in the cabin. Knocked on the pilot's door <laughs> in his big Adidas pilot's <laughs> jacket. Um, incidentally, um, <laughs> what you were saying, I hope he had tried to have a go in the cabin. <laughs> Kevin Keegan to uh, Marcus. <laughs> with, with Richard <laughs> and Mr. Mark. Marcus, Marcus Speller. Speller. Dapper laughs again. Yeah. Oi, 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 oi. Exactly. Listen oi, oi. Oi, oi. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Keegan. <laughs> Kevin Keegan. Um, dead. <laughs> Kevin Keegan to step in a bucket at some point this week. Uh, well, he's uh, 10 to 1 on with Bet365. Yeah. So. All right. Lump your money on 10 that. 10 to 1? Yeah, on. Oh, and, I was oh, going to okay. say. Yeah. What are the odds if um, he <laughs> is not wearing a shirt while he does it because he's outside and he accidentally locks himself out of his house? Uh, again, same price. Same price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no extra value there for that. You right. guys. I he, the, hate you lot. Thanks, thanks for the email, Richard. No, I really appreciate that, Richard, and I'm mm. sorry about Jim there. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a United derby at Old Trafford, Manchester versus Sheffield. Uh, I tell you what, this is, a, this is a cracker. This is a cracker. Hello, Gareth. Um, he says, uh, settle down, because it's a good one, uh-huh. and a long one. Uh, as masters of Keeganology, I suspect you may know the story of Keegan's 1974 trip to Belgrade already. I don't. No. no. But I only recently discovered it myself, so just in case you don't, I thought I'd share, and I'm so glad you did. In 1974, <laughs> England were due to play Yugoslavia as part of a European tour, so they flew to Belgrade from Bulgaria, where the last game had been played. At the time, Joe Mercer was caretaker manager, and it was said to say that his attitude to players' behaviour and state of dress was somewhat informal. Lovely stuff. Uh, as a result, the plane ride was closer to what you'd expect from a stag do abroad rather than a professional football team, with the players in their best 70s fashion gear and the booze flowing. Although not for young <laughs> Kevin Keegan, who slept through most of the flight. Can I just say, I would love to have been on that flight. Oh, can you imagine? <laughs> a little finery. Yeah. <laughs> Puffing away on cigars. Yeah. Perm. Perm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glorious. Uh, when they, uh, Everyone's smoking. Everyone's smoking yeah. right down the flight. Uh, when they landed, the team discovered that the FA had forgotten that Sofia in Bulgaria and Belgrade were in different time zones, so their Yugoslavian minders weren't quite there yet. While Joe Mercer <laughs> and the other FA officials went off to try and find them, the players were hid in the baggage area. Bored, Alec Lindsay of Liverpool jumped up on the lo- luggage conveyor belt and started mucking about, only to be told to get off by the other players. What they didn't know that some what they didn't know was that someone had already called security. Keegan, carrying two bags of souvenir pottery from Bulgaria. <laughs> you know where this is going. You know where this is going. Had, had done nothing more than sit down on the metal edge of the conveyor belt when Yugoslav security arrived and dragged him off to a back room. There, in his own words, he was forced to kneel like a prisoner of war. <laughs> while being punched, clubbed and kicked. He was then charged with sexually assaulting a stewardess, assaulting a security guard, disturbing the peace and causing an obstruction. Life in jail. Life. you got life. Luckily, by that point, the players had found Mercer and the FA, who themselves managed to uh, find Keegan and alert security as to who he was. The charges were dropped and an understandably sobbing Keegan was released. <laughs> Next day, still played in the England game and scored a last-minute equaliser. Oh. Peak Keegan. Oh. And, then, and then was punched. <laughs> Gareth, that was wonderful. Oh, Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Say, Gareth, you set Spelzy off. Oh, he's, yeah. gone. he's done. Spelzy's he's done. done. How many he's more done. of these are there? Yeah. <laughs> I thought we knew all of them. Ah, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. Thank you very much for your email. So we'll, we'll get to, if you want to get in touch. You can't, you can't leave it there because Mark isn't ready. Yet. All right, OK, I'll yeah. do one more. Uh, Tom Hodgson... <laughs> I'm putting your mic down. Tom Tom Hodgson from Gateshead says, a big hi to the lads at the Ramble. That's kind of what you do with an email, I suppose. My yeah. hi of the week is Sheerness's Stuart Crookshank taking a knock to the nose during a game. Luckily, luckily, luckily uh, for him, a tampon was available to suppress the bleeding as he went on in style to score a blinder in a 5-0 victory in the East Sheppey Sunday League. <laughs> I've attached the photo of Stuart in action, tampon and all. Everyone there agreed it was a bloody great game. I'll be honest, I wasn't <laughs> listening to that. <laughs> a, ma- a man put a tampon up his nose. Yeah. Yeah. Good man. Good. Yeah. Was it Keegan? <laughs> <laughs> no, he 
wouldn't have put it out there himself. <laughs> no. Yeah. Was he was he beaten, kicked and clubbed? Marcus. <laughs> Marcus, clubbed. Marcus, two bags of crockery. Yeah. Probably smashed. smashed a bit. Smashed, smashed. <laughs> the most like a great bra- wedding. The most breakable of all the souvenirs. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realise until he got home though. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you a present. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you've left me? <laughs> I doubt you'd have told us a stewardess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, never mind. Goodness. Wonderful. Oh. Keegan, oh. let's Keegan. Keegan. We're going to have to get out of here for my sake. Yeah. Any more for any more? I'm serious about the game. Yeah. It's, it'll take, take a bit of time, of course. Indeed. While we're in, uh, in, in, in the Far East, uh, although China is at Far East, you're getting on for it, certainly. Mm. Um, well, let's go to Thailand. Now, obviously, the King of Thailand died recently, mm. um, which, like, l- l- let's be clear, the crux of what we're talking about is a man dying. So, obviously, that, that's, that's sad and all the rest and of it. And he was the longest serving monarch in the world at the Of time. course, yeah, yeah. yeah. A- absolutely, he was. Um, <clears throat> Excuse me. But this prompted football league officials out in Thailand to end the season three games early. Yeah. Now, again, obviously, a man's died, blah, blah, blah. That's, that, that, that's very sad. But two clubs were relegated <laughs> due to this with three matches left and had a chance of staying up. I mean, was Kevin King a manager one of them? <laughs> <laughs> was Kevin King a all of them? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Marcus well, has gone for a while now. I thought we had a good chance of staying yeah. up, but the, I would, the king died. <laughs> I, w- I would love it if he pulled through. Yeah. <laughs> Should we see you in a bit, mate? Oh, dear. <laughs> you can just imagine the coach rock. We've got three games left. Two of them are winnable. Two of them are winnable, right? Well, we need. We can I, 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 I better take this call. <laughs> you are. <laughs> Outrageous! It is outrageous. <laughs> Richard Scudamore so- is really rumoured to be mulling it over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love what Marcus has done. I just feel for you, Marcus. He says in, in the running order he's written: laws in Thailand can be very strict when speaking out against, speaking out against anything to do with the royal family. Yeah, we're apparently, a bit we're scared. We're apparently, okay. the League Cup will be decided by a lottery. <laughs> Incredible, absolutely hey, incredible. You Scotland was bad. And tell you what, if Kevin Keegan was managing one of the teams in a final being decided by a lottery, he would just leave. Finished that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've lost my ticket. I've lost my. I've lost our ticket, boys. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know where to go? Apparently, mm. apparently the, the clubs lodged an appeal, but after a meeting um, with all eighteen league clubs, seventeen agreed to end the season early. I love the fact one. Yeah. Don't, <laughs> that, that, I don't care if I get yeah. locked up. That one We're going to stay up this season. That one club had a couple of bags of crockery. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, Keegan, what happened was Keegan was managing a team that had a good chance of staying up, but we're in the relegation zone. <laughs> And Kevin agreed to go and meet the um, the Thai the Thai king just just as a as a, as a nice <laughs> yeah as a nice like royal visit and then accidentally <laughs> killed him. <laughs> oh dear! Oh dear! Oh, well, there we are. So we've scored twenty plus goals right. in a Premier League season. Anyway, back to Keegan. Oh, I've got a story about Keegan. Oh, yes. quick quick story. Always. Um, <laughs> we, Jim and I were on um, TalkSport talking about the book earlier mm. and um, Hawksby and Jacobs um, who, who were kind enough to have us on there and, and we told them we, how much we love Keegan um, and they were like, oh, you know, you know we, we, Keegan's good value and all that sort of stuff and, and they said, have you heard about Kevin Keegan's problems with the planning, with getting planning permission? <laughs> it, it's, Which it's many so, of us had no, and, and no. as students of Keegan, we were both yeah. a little disappointed in ourselves. our knowledge, the saga of the Keegan planning thing, <laughs> spell is already off, yeah. you don't know anything about this. You'll see him in a bit, yeah. listeners. So basically, Marcus... <laughs> It's, just, it's all set up. I didn't Keegan's know. planning permission. Yeah. <laughs> what could go wrong? In many ways, I don't need to add any more of that, no. I? But I will. There's a bit of self-indulgence, I please, will. Please, please. Um, so I did a bit of reading between the lines, and then I'm looking between <laughs> the stories I could find. I think it was a couple of years ago. And Keegan um, applied to have an extension put on the end of his house. I haven't even got to the best bit yeah. yet. Just, and, the, uh, just the thought of Keegan's house is yeah, enough for yeah. Marcus. I know people have done that, and it's been great. They've had the extension, and they've been living in the house, and all's good. You know where this is going, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> and, and 
And that's what happened to Kevin. Right, let's get on to the <laughs> next day. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, he applied for plan for Michelot's house, and, um, and it was, it, it took, apparently it took way longer than he expected, and it was turned down. And so, I don't, I don't know how the newspaper got hold of this, but Ke- apparently Keegan wrote a letter. Just so, go through the bins. Yeah, right. Right, a letter. <laughs> you won't learn. But the thing is, if you write a letter to someone, it's not mean you're being, is it? Well, it'll fall in there well, if it turns out to be inconvenient for you. <laughs> the universe well, will find a way. It won't be in Keegan's bin because he's foot's in his bin. <laughs> Let me get no, on with it. He's got this. the rubbish bin and the foot bin. <laughs> this is one of the problems with telling us about Keegan. You can't get anywhere. <laughs> anyway, so it was turned down. Apparently, it took eight weeks and he was fuming about it. Mm. So he wrote a letter saying, um, I can't believe this has happened. One, because mm. um, I know for a fact the guy on the road, he had his plan permission sort of approved <laughs> and it's not fair. And I can't believe it's taken you eight weeks to get to this conclusion anyway, because all you're supposed to be doing is looking over the, the thing, checking the drawings or whatever. And I think it was like turned down because it was too big or something. And he said, It shouldn't have taken you eight weeks to, to get to that conclusion. All you've got to do is look at the drawings and you'll be able to find out straight away. Anyway, the guy, and Keegan went on to say, um, the guy down the road had this guy, this planning um, consultant or whatever who mm. makes the decision, had a different planning consultant, and I know that yeah. he approved that one, and it's exactly the same as mine, mm. so I want him to look into it. I'm appealing this, and I want the guy down the road, yeah. who did the, sorry, the guy who did the one down the road, to, to look into it again, and I expect that to be happening post-haste. Mm. Um, so to cut a long story short, they agreed with that, they got the planning consultant from down the road to do it, mm. and he turned it down as well. <laughs> How much does he have to achieve to simply be able to do the things he wants to do? <laughs> the council! Even the council! No. Yeah. <laughs> not having it. Yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Right. Um, and uh, that's very enjoyable. He puts the toilet seat down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Stevens says, Discovering through the Chart Music podcast that Kevin Keegan... Mm-hmm. Once co-host, sorry, once co-hosted an episode of Top of the Pops, ostensibly to pr- promote his latest single, mm. um, but he wasn't able to perform it because it had only reached a hapless 172 in the chart. <laughs> <laughs> the worst moment, however, is where the now disgraced Dave Lee Travis tries to head a ball to impress him. Keggy pushes him over and then remarks that DLT doesn't enjoy physical contact. <laughs> Which sets up the mm. LT for a disgusting bit of leering about how there's one person he would like some physical contact with, Sheena Easton. <laughs> oh. oh, the scene is so terribly 70s. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Can't think of any oh, more Mark is that. off. Yeah, he's right. oh, And I'll, I'll finish up from Peter Blow, who's a regular contributor, oh, and yeah. probably a friend of the Ramble by mm-hmm. now, who says, I saw a banner at the cricket in Australia which simply said, Venga not out. Yeah, <laughs> nice. nice. There nice. we are. Nice. I love that. Yeah. Oh, Keggy. Will you make number one, Kevin? Yes. No! No! no. <laughs> <laughs> he had quite a few singles, didn't he, Keggy? People, yeah. you know, people think of one or two here and there, but he actually released quite a bit of music, from what, what I remember. What number did they get to? 170. <laughs> <laughs> he released quite a bit of music. Um, well, for Kevin Keegan. Yeah. <laughs> More than you think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> More than none, which is insane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to say 95, 96. Right. The reason I'm saying that is because they were talking about Blackburn struggling. Did they struggle after the year after they won the Premier League? Yeah, they, they did. struggled yeah, yeah, to start yeah. the next season. Mm. And Beardsley was it, and he was brilliant. <laughs> he was a fantastic he, he just looks like the most unlikely footballer. <laughs> <laughs> he really speaks <laughs> this, to this, this, shimmy, man. This is nothing like he's, it. He, here's a big shout. But the way Beardsley used to move, obviously not as effective, not as great. Messy. Yeah, Messy. yeah, yeah no, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's odd. It's, it's true. Silly shit. Hey, was that the season that Newcastle signed Janot, though? Uh, was Ginola uh, Ferdinand at the same time, wasn't it? Yeah. So it might have been, yeah. Okay, we've had, no, we've no, G- Ginola was uh, involved in the, the league run. Because the, the, Keegan, well, Keegan had to lie to oh, John sorry. Hall mm. or Freddie Shepherd and say that um, Beardsley was two years younger. Oh, really? To get him in because. <laughs> the, and, they, time. And, they, and they just went with it. They Can you imagine with how it? nervous Keegan must have been before that? <laughs> <laughs> imagine Kevin Keegan setting himself up to lie yeah. to someone. Oh, the, the trauma he going through, the anxiety. How did it go? It went fine, but I accidentally took in Peter. Beardley's birth certificate with me. <laughs> <laughs> Tipped to my forehead. <laughs> I, I set it on fire. He technically doesn't exist now. Yeah. <laughs> That's made it in. That's there we go. Made it in. <laughs> yeah. Very slim it's, pickings. All you got to do is make it's, it's, it's the name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Art Grimley. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Basically, if you're called like John Smith, you've got no chance. Yeah. 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 Just name. make up a name. Yeah. 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 Call yourself Stormzy. No one cares. I'll read it. Craig Doyle. Hello, Ramblers. I have a pair of Kevin Keegan stories to bring to the banquet. A pair of them. <laughs> pair of them. Uh, and the first is Keegan's last game for Liverpool before moving to Hamburg in the summer. Liverpool won the league with Keegan having a phenomenal season. However, in Keegan's penultimate game, they lost the FA Cup against Man United 2-1. 
Four days later, it was the 1977 European Cup final in the Stadio Olimpico Rome and Liverpool were playing against Borussia Mönchengladbach. Keegan runs the game and in the process wins a penalty halved by Scottish disaster Bertie Vaux to make it 3-1 to Liverpool, winning their first European Cup. After the match, Keegan enters the dressing room and says, I have won you the European Cup there, lads, and that's my parting gift. Centre-half Tommy Smith spins around and says, but you're shit on Saturday, and then lamped him. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at the celebrations of the win, Keegan is there, but he's wearing a big pair of aviators and a black eye. No need to hit him, <laughs> Tommy Smith was tough. Tommy Smith was a guy that, um, was it... Um... <laughs> Is it Bill Shankly said about him? He wasn't. He wasn't born. He was quarried. Oh dear! Oh, absolutely. Poor Keggy. No need to him. No. No need to him. He's story just, two. He's just trying to be light, isn't he? Yeah. He's just <laughs> trying to be confident. This is the, that's the support story to the main event. <laughs> A second, shorter story in my lifetime. Being a Scottish kid, I actually got the chance to go to Kevin King's Soccer Circus. Oh, yeah. Oh, and wow. got to do a bit of head tennis with the great man himself. And while oh. not knowing particularly who he was at the time, apart from knowing he was a former England manager, in doing the challenge after a poor header from myself and a determined Keegan to keep it up, uh, as, in, as we in the high 20s... Uh, oh, yeah, we were in the high 20s, sorry. So the, the headers happened, they yeah, got yeah. to over 20, and, and uh, Keegan was determined player. to keep it going. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and he fell over and ripped his trousers. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for that, Craig Doyle that, and Kevin Keegan's soccer circus. True? No, it doesn't. It doesn't. In many ways, Jim, we've got to the point now where it doesn't actually matter. No, no. Yeah. you can you can make up a story about him and then it will like happen to him the next week. The thing is, though, because Jim, genuinely, the lawsuit can't get any bigger. No, so there's, there's no. And Pete's going to be a, a, a witness for the for the prosecution anyway. So he'd fuck it up, Keegan, yeah. wouldn't he? Uh, he would absolutely <laughs> represent himself. Um, is it, you you use the How word? Have I got life for this? <laughs> I was your, a defendant. Your solicitor's on fire, Kegan. <laughs> Kegan. Pete, um, Pete, um, you use the... Stop trying to bring him in. I'm talking it. about his own fault. I'm talking about you. So now, now that you are him, you're defending him. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've become everything I hate. Uh, hello to Callum. Hello, Callum. All right, Callum. Uh, hello, lads. Uh, on the latest show, I was delighted to hear a mention of Kevin King's soccer circus. Mm. That oft-forgotten relic of mid noughties football <laughs> I, patter. I love it how everyone calls it a soccer school. But with Keegan, it's a soccer circus. I know, yeah. <laughs> What I like... No, I think it was it called a soccer circus or something. No, it was. It was. It was. That it was, was the name of it. Yeah. yeah. That genuinely... Yeah. Was, that's what I mean. Like, everyone else, it would be a soccer <laughs> school. <laughs> Growing up in Glasgow, I was about 14 uh, when a school friend invited me along to the soccer circus for a day out. It was fucking shit. <laughs> <laughs> We were the only people there, and the board staff let us go round twice extra for free. It makes it sound like it was an amusement. Yeah, 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 I think, no, I think like it was like train. an experience type. Yeah. It wasn't like a Bobby Charlton type. Thing. Oh, was no. it not? Oh, it I think like it was. A... It was a travelling like <laughs> mini soccer theme park. What's yeah. Kevin involved? We talked about this years ago. Name on it, didn't oh. he? Take your head, mate. Kevin Keegan's football clusterfuck. Yeah. Give it it's a Google. fucking shit. Yeah, give it a Google. Why are you um, firing me out of a cannon? As we were. As we were leaving, though, we noticed the great man himself exiting the office. Ah. So he didn't have to stick around. <laughs> he was clearly just a, a figurehead, promotional yeah. figurehead. But no, he puts the hours in. No. And that's oh, why yeah. Keggy oh, is brilliant. Yeah. Two people in that day. Yeah. <laughs> if, if my name's on the door, I really should be there every yeah. day. I should be checking fire exits. I'm not a lion tamer. Don't put me in the cage with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were the only people there, as I said, uh, and Bond staff let us go around twice extra for free. Uh, we approached Keggy tentatively. I, a lifelong Man City fan, like my dad, was wearing an 05 or six home shirt. Uh. We're talking Barn. We're talking Vassell. We're talking Fowler. Uh, my friend was wearing a bright orange Valencia away shirt he'd gotten on holiday. Keegan was initially very friendly, but when I asked him to sign my City shirt, he said, I'm not fucking signing that. It was the season after I left. Oh. Oh. Fair enough, to be fair to Keegan. Turn no to swear. No turning, to swear. turning his attention briefly to my friend, he pointed at the Valencia shirt and said, what the fucking hell is that? We were 14. <laughs> 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 He's gone off on one, hasn't he? <laughs> Um, yeah, we, he returned to my shirt, signing it reluctantly and commenting uh, commenting on how fi uh, filthy it was. Oh, hmm. Filthy? You want to give that a wash, kid? Maybe he's in a bad <laughs> mood after a recent pratfall. Maybe. <laughs> I took my signed shirt home and immediately put it in a frame which would fall off the wall and smash it a few days later because, of course, it did. <laughs> he, apparently, you also took the Valencia shirt off the kid, washed it in his washing machine and it shrunk it. Yeah. Well, apparently, I, I lost touch with the school friend, but I hope somewhere there's still an orange Valencia away shirt with a massive Kevin Keegan signature. Maybe he's listening to the show. Sharpie on it. Pete, maybe we can re 
re, uh, what's the word? A uh, reunion. Re- get them back re- to yeah. the reunion. I mean, the reunion islands. We, yeah. I mean, <laughs> we must, generation wise, we must have a lot of listeners who went to that soccer circus. So do get in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone Good end up being a professional footballer? That's what I want to know. Uh, so thank From you. From going to a Kevin Keegan soccer <laughs> themed theme park. It's like Mr. Blobby World, isn't it? Yeah. Um, the soccer circus uh, close for So it, did but... anyone ever become a TV presenter by meeting Noel Edmund? <laughs> <laughs> the soccer circus close for a good eighth month later. Oh, so okay. there we go. Get Callum. Uh, hello to. I was, however, proven wrong. I was ridiculed for wearing my Arsenal top to the gym by one gentleman who looked at me, chuckled to himself, and asked, Why the hell have you worn that outside? <laughs> what made it worse was he was 65 years old and completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Paul Salmon, hello Ramblers. I can no longer listen to uh, stories of Kevin King and painting him in a bad light without speaking up in his defence. Look, Paul, I'm on the same page. It's these rabble. Is this Paul, the no, Paul Simon. Is, we're, not, we're not painting <laughs> him in a bad light. We're painting him in a very unlucky light. Yeah. Mm. Paul uh, Salmon. Uh, life is painting him in the unlucky yeah. light. Yeah, exactly. You've got to have we, some we all, respect. I think I, think I can speak on behalf of Jim and Marcus as well when I say we all do have like an affection for Keith. Oh, we love Keith. And Keegan. a respect for what he achieves in the game. But definitely, if he sits down on a park bench, it will be wet paint on it. Yeah. 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 And then uh, get struck by lightning. Well, yeah, I mean, and, this, and chiefly, a lot of respect for what he achieved with this soccer circus as well. This, don't be rude. This can't, I mean, this is kind of ties it. I'm kind of hoisting myself here by. It's Mike happening Keegan. to you. Yeah. He's even talking about him. Hoist it's happening away. to you. Hoist Keegan. Away. Uh, Keegan was uh, once sat... In, but basically, my dad used to work for British Airways. This is Paul Salmon, not me, not Simon. Uh, and uh, on one flight to America, I joined him. I was 10 at the time and just starting to bloody love football. Keegan was sat in first class with his daughter and down the back in world traveller economy. Uh, was, thank you for that. Uh, was a large group of kids who were on a trip similar to uh, like what Make-A-Wish offers, basically, in the US. Terminally ill children mm-hmm. having a dream experience. My dad explained to Kevin Keegan uh, if he could... Uh, come down and uh, sign a few autographs for the boys who were into football from the group. Uh, without hesitating, he said, no, I'd like to go down and meet them if that's OK. He spent three hours with the group, missing oh. his dinner, eating with them. One of them, while sat in his lap, was sick all over him, which caused no <laughs> issue. T- Tell me, little child, Marcus. Uh, and except when, uh, disembarking the plane, a fellow first-class passenger said, typical footballer getting drunk and vomiting. That's oh. the funny bit. He that's got, the funny he bit. Got he got blamed for it. He got blamed for being oh, oik. It wasn't even his sick. Brilliant stuff. <laughs> Who knows that in, we're in between the club season and the World Cup? <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about right said Fred. <laughs> Giving them the kudos that perhaps they didn't receive fully no. in the 90s. Um, but they have now, so mm. we can kick on. Yeah. Uh, who'd like to hear about me meeting Kevin Keegan? Literally yes. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I met Is that him. your first point of order? <laughs> Who would like to hear about me meeting Kevin Keegan? Did I'm... you treat him with a bit more respect than you usually bloody do, Marcus Speller? I know, one of my favourite... Football. Oh, Pete, I reckon it was one of the worst displays of two faces you've yeah. ever seen. Yeah. It was Disgusting. really nice to it. Yeah. Iago Disgusting. style levels of <laughs> yeah. two face turncoatery. No, I have. I look. Do I respect Kevin Keegan and <laughs> Arsenal fan TV? I respect one of those things, yeah. and it's Kevin Keegan. Um, <laughs> no, I just find a few things rather amusing about the man of what's happened. Like, to like him. what? Well, let's well, have some highlights. We, we know all this. What was it like to actually meet him? <laughs> He's genuinely a lovely man. He's exactly as you would imagine. People love that man as well, and rightly so. I have to say, though, uh, no sooner had he walked into the room uh, and, and he shakes everybody's hands and very congenial, very lovely, he sat down. And I'm not joking. The first story he tells... Now, I don't know whether this is... Uh, a, a recent thing, or back in the day when he was playing in Liverpool, but he, for some reason, he told some story. Obviously, theft is not funny, etc., and so on. But he told a story about his car radio getting nicked when he was in Liverpool. Did he? <laughs> <laughs> that was his opening thing. Incredible. Well, that was his anecdote. I had my car stereo stolen in the place where everyone says car stereos get stolen. Yeah, so uh, I I think it was probably from yesterday. But um, but there we are. A lovely man, nonetheless. They're they're not removable anymore, surely, are they, Marcus? I've no idea. They probably are if you're Kevin Keegan. (laughs) I fit fit in my own car stereo and it's definitely not removable, so I can concur it's not. There we are. But a lovely chap. Genuinely, hmm. very, very lovely. Still, thinks, a meeting of minds. Still yeah. thinks penalties are a lottery, though. Yeah. Despite mm. the overwhelming well, we'll, evidence, we'll, we'll, myself and well, others suggested, you never played the game. Yeah. So, we'll also is... find out about that in the summer, I expect. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. He did admit that uh, when he took England to Euro 2000, that um, they had these ideas in place, and then when they tried to implement them and they didn't quite work, they didn't have much of a plan to back that up. Right. right. You know, and I thought... like Kevin <laughs> managerial <laughs> career at all. Well, but... wait, wait, Kevin, what are we going to do next? Well, I thought that was work. So, <laughs> anyone got any ideas? Because I genuinely thought that was going to work. Tino's turned up to the match drunk. Let's play with <laughs> yeah. Barry Venison in the role. <laughs> yeah. what, what's the tactical style? 
Hope, mainly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're playing a hope, hope too. The force of my charisma and goodwill. Yeah. Oh, but which, can, look, which can get you pretty far. They can do. When you're Kevin Keegan. England look like they've got a plan on the Southgate. Don't they? Some time, but I thought Crystal Palace mm. were very good. Um, and I like that stadium. Yeah, it's not oh, nice yeah, supposed to go great, football. It's a, not one of those identical stadiums. No, exactly. No. Yeah. yeah. Now, it, so... the last time I went, we were beaten five one. <laughs> yeah. Very sad, indeed. Um, now, if, but of course, if you wanted to go and watch Newcastle again, you may go to St James's Park, Peter. Yeah, here we go. Because you, right, okay. you probably feel fairly welcome there, right? Okay, I'd yeah. feel fairly welcome there. Yeah. Jim would, would as well. It, what about me? Yeah, no, you would as well. <laughs> oh, right, very much so. Very much. So. It would appear that that not everybody is welcome at St James's Park these days. And this is going to be uh, mapped out um, next month because <laughs> then the footballing gods are good. <laughs> Kevin yeah. Keegan is publishing his autobiography next month. I'll be oh. reading it. I'm going to read it. Paper That's cuts same. galore. <laughs> I think, uh, pre-ordering that. Yeah. I think him... Uh, Can't wait for that to give me a headache. <laughs> straight in my eye. <laughs> I think him not being allowed into St. Joseph's Park is a um, public um, insurance issue. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Public liability. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's up there with asbestos when it comes to being unwelcome in buildings. The premiums are too high, Kev. Yeah. <laughs> what a way to treat your Messiah, eh? But is that the legacy of it? Oh, this building in the 90s, it had asbestos in it. This building yeah. had Keegan in it in the 90s. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the most, one of the biggest kind of things for me, takeaways, apart from like, obviously, you know, Mike Ashley and uh, Jimenez and stuff, um, Mike Ashley, when he was on the phone, he would always call um, Kev King Kev. Oh, would he? Good. Oh, my oh the most honest man in football. Read the extract. Well, he he said he's sort of been effectively banned from yeah. Newcastle. I don't mean he's officially been banned, but he said he's been made to feel very unwelcome. And he said uh, that he did go back once, I think, since leaving Newcastle. When was it, Pete? Two thousand and eight. Yes, I that, mean, he, that he um, that he resigned. He said he's been back once since then. And this was because it was it was a leaving do for a lifelong Newcastle United fan. And Keggy said he returned incognito. I improvised. I put uh, I put on a pair of glasses. I found a flat cap and I turned the collar up on my overcoat to complete the disguise. <laughs> Apparently he was disguise. He's wearing a hat. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently he was spotted straight away by a friendly <laughs> member of <his> staff. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Kevin Keegan in a hat? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. So yeah. Um, we look forward to uh, we look forward God. to next month. Mm. Christmas has come early, Jim. It really has, yeah. isn't it? Damn right. Will it be released on Halloween? Do we think? <laughs> oh, I don't know. Um, let's go down to the different. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> maybe be quite similar though in some ways. Yeah. Sam from Newcastle has also been in touch. Yes. Hi, Pete. He begins wrongly. <laughs> um, as a 23-year-old Geordie, my appreciation my appreciation of the entertainers era is limited to grainy YouTube footage and my balding father's fond memories. Of, such a unnecessary detail. Yeah. Fond memories of how luscious David Ginola's locks used to look, look from the Gallagher end. You can therefore probably imagine my despair on Thursday afternoon when a colleague who had popped in to cover my break announced that I had missed the appearance in our office of none other than 70s pop star and friend of the ramble Kevin Keegan. Oh my oh, goody, oh. Dejected, More on him later. Yeah, dejected, I wand- wandered out into Leicester Square to look for some food only to bump into King Kev himself. Wow. Mr. Keegan was impeccably polite as I talked frantically at him about the current state of the club, Mike Ashley's pizza party and the sale of Alexander Mitrovic and happily posed for a picture with me. And I damn near wept when in doing so he whispered, Two Geordie boys together. Ah, That's lovely. lovely. That is no, absolutely that is lovely. lovely. No. As he made his excuses afterwards and set off into the afternoon, I shouted after him, Ashley out. He turned back and called back, I reckon there are 300,000 Geordies who agree with you there. He was a proper bloke and provided a welcome reminder of finer times, and I reckon if we had been able to hold on to a win at Old Trafford on Saturday, he would have loved it. And then a cyclist went into him. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Come on. Fell down a manhole, etc. Um, <laughs> That's outrageous. Yeah, I mean, to be fair... Keggy is from Doncaster, isn't it? Exactly. So yeah. he's, he's another fake Geordie, like yeah. their own like Pete Donaldson. Donaldson. But we've got more. Adopted on, look, there will be a section of the show to have a laugh at Keggy, and you know it's coming up. <laughs> yeah, so he, he's going already. Don't speak out of turn. He's obviously been a gentleman <laughs> there. I know, yeah, and, and I'm, only, I'm the only one here who's met him. You've met the man. <laughs> and I know that he's yeah. a gentleman as well. We got him famously. Yeah. yeah. All right then. He doesn't remember you. <laughs> <laughs> All the best, Mark. We're pulling for you. Go on, Marky baby. And we're pulling for Southgate's. St- steeds <laughs> as well. studs studs Southgate studs yeah, as well. definitely yeah definitely right in the absence of going for gold Luke what yeah. have you prepared for us I've, I've thought um, well, we talked about Kevin Keegan earlier we did didn't mm. we what, and, and since then you've come up with something no I had it planned oh did you I had it planned I told you there's a Kevin Keegan section coming up yeah. we don't have peaks so there's no going for gold but what I'll do is I'll do a little Kevin Keegan based quiz oh man and the winner out of you two can get a point on the board I know I, know I can't get it. Uh. Um, so what I'm going to do, chaps, I've got I've got six quotes here, three each. One, three for you, Jim. Three for you, Marcus. And I'm going to read you the quote in turn, 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I want you to tell me whether it's an extract from Kevin Keegan's new book <laughs> or it's a quote from Katie Price, a.k.a. Jordan. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> so, and the winner at the end gets a point, all right? So they're, they're, they're pitched to each of us. We're not... Uh... Yeah, you get one each. Okay. I'll, I'll go back Does and Does this forth. go towards the going for gold? Yeah, it does. I told yeah. you. Oh, sorry. You just mentioned yeah, sorry. Yeah, you're not listening to me. It's just I Kevin just, Keegan. You just said Kevin Keegan and I lost it. Yeah, you got me into <laughs> one of fugues. Yeah. Right. Okay, Marcus, you're going to go first, okay? Oh, no. So here's the quote. Yeah. And you need to tell me, just to be clear, yep. if it's from Kevin Keegan's new book or it's a quote from Katie Price, who's also known as Jordan. Yes. Okay. I came up against a wall of incompetence, deceit, and arrogance. You really couldn't make up some of the things that happened. That's Kevin Keegan. Is it Kevin Keegan? Correct. It is Kevin Keegan. Yes. You're right. What I need is like one of those things where, where I can give you a, a thing for a right answer. What about... Have a, uh, go, have a go with the buttons. Don't play the whole thing. Have you got a little jingle for that, Pete? Oh, that's a WhatsApp group. It's a WhatsApp group. Have you got a little jingle for that? No, I haven't got a jingle. No, we haven't got a jingle. For God's sake! Going. What's this? One? Hi, I'm Kevin Keegan. Yes, oh, right. To the football ramble. So if you Brilliant. get one right, if you get it right, I'm going to give you that thing. Right, so okay. Marcus, you're one up. Okay. All right. I should have planned this before, but I'm <laughs> right, Jim, ready? You're getting yep. the, Pete's uh, legacy just sort of you, you, I, 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 it, through sort of uh, what am I trying to say? Osmosis from you. the thing comes through, and uh, there we you're go. Struggling. Just press the button. Yeah. Jim, ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some of these are quite curveball-y, so just yeah. bear that in mind. Okay. Our wedding tent was made of plastic. <laughs> <laughs> it was disappointing because it looked like it had come straight out of a B&Q flat pack oh man that, that is a tough one <laughs> that is a tough one I'm going to go Jordan alright let's find out yes it was Jordan <laughs> yeah, there we go there well, we go. well played. So, Marcus, you're up next okay right. ready sorry I, where's the where's the keggy I don't, I haven't, no you can only get a keggy if it's a keggy alright oh, I see yeah do you know what I mean that's very confusing but listeners can keep up right. Marcus you ready yeah Unfortunately, with the media, the red tops, the ones who can be loyal, when I say loyal, it's a game. This is a game we're in. If it's your time to get picked on, then you get picked on. And you know, I'm used to that. That's Jordan. Correct. It is yeah. Jordan. This is easier than I thought. No, I've, no, it's ultimately a guess. But the first one I knew was Keegan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jim, you're up. Ready? <laughs> Tabloid hacks were dispatched to find out if there was another reason why I was down some lover's lane. Come on, <laughs> Peggy. Hi, I'm Kevin Keegan, and you're listening to the Football Ramble. Correct, it's anyone, too old. Yeah, if anyone doesn't know the story, that's from the time he was hit with a baseball bat in a label. That's not funny. That's not funny. Though, I, is it? Just Someone reporting what happened. Yeah. yeah, you can't laugh at that. No. Uh, okay, Marcus, you're up. It might, if it's a draw, you both get a point. I was sick of them. Sick of the way they were riding rush all over me. Sick of being treated like dirt. Oh, that's. Ooh. Ah. I think that's Keegan. You sure? Yeah. Yes! <laughs> You're listening to the football oh. round. Right, get Jim, in there! You need to get this one right. Sudden I death, do. Jimmy. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, I will confess now, yeah. I did sort of make Jim's a lot easier than Marcus, because I thought yeah. Marcus would get some wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so this one might be a bit easier. Okay. Uh, and then, Don't do that, I oh, will yeah. love it. It's got to be, it's no. got to be. <laughs> ready? Are you ready uh-huh. for this? I am. Okay. It wasn't Mike's beer guzzling. Oh, that I'm <laughs> oh, piss off. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's Keggy, isn't it? Hi, I'm Kevin. There we King, go. And you're Three all. To the football you both get a point. All about that. Yeah. Hey? Well, ultimately, um, you've mugged yourself off because now we're a point ahead of you and it so evens out. Even itself out, yeah. <laughs> right, uh, we're going to. Um, Pete's going to do another little special feature here. Oh, is it the thing now? It yeah. is, yeah. It's the thing now. Yeah. I. I'll, I'll, I'll level with you. I have no idea what's going to yeah. happen. And I'm worried about how this is going to go. Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> well, Peter. worry not. <laughs> Peter, over to you. So. That one. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so just a general do you stop. Remember, do you remember back in the day, like those choose your adventure books? Like the role playing games where you got to like run around as an elf or a, or a knight and yeah. kill orcs and stuff like that. Um, well, this is your chance to play as a ramble favourite, Mr. Kevin Keegan. <laughs> Put the house lights up, if you would. Thank you very much. Uh, under somebody's chair is a Sports Direct giant mug. <laughs> that is a picture, that, and we're doing that. Yeah. Oh, I think Who's got it? Peter? I think we're over on the right side. I mean, side. I just, to be honest, I, 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 I think we got it. Go, oh, fucking hell, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fucking hell, I've got it. Get up on stage. Come on, give me a round of... 
Right. Boo. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Right. What's your name again? Sorry. Andrew. Andrew. Right. The year is 1995. November. Your team reside at the top of the Premiership. Your hair is salt and pepper. Thick and dense like thicket. Crossed with coral. Crossed with success. You are in your office when Freddie Shepherd steps in. He's been tasked by John Hall to bring Alan Shearer to Newcastle United. But instead, he's decided the smart money is giving Paul Brayson a new deal. <laughs> a contract as long as he wants, says Freddie. Money is no object, he barks, spitting out a bit of Tudor crisp. <laughs> now, it can't be not denied that you know that Les needs a little bit more help up front, and Paul Brayson isn't quite in the £15 million bracket. More than anything, though, you just want Freddie to stop talking. You want everyone to stop talking. You want to hide away from the world because people can be very cruel. Do you want to reply to Freddie? A. Get out of my office, Freddie, you big garbage whale. <laughs> B. Listen, fatso, you've got until three before you get a punching from Terry, Mac and Pedro, which are the names of my fists. <laughs> Do you want to go for A or do you want to go for B? I want to go for B. So you've gone for B. Sure thing, Mr. Shepard, anything you say. Right, okay, right. Sure thing, Mr. Shepard, anything you say. Freddy slinks off uh, as well as a 22-stone man can slink off. <laughs> you, you turn on your computer. This contract isn't going to write itself, you know. Windows 95 words into action. You locate the Word icon and start Microsoft Word and start uh, writing Paul's contract. Perhaps foreshadowing the 95-96 Premier League season, you've nearly finished the contract, but then something goes very wrong indeed. Microsoft Word has crashed. <laughs> Just your luck. Why me, you utter? A single tear rolls down your cheek and nestles in that weird hole you got on your chin. This is the real thing. We don't need Andrew for this, do we? No. <laughs> do you, do you A, press control, alt, delete? Or B, mash as many keys as humanly possible? What do you reckon? What do you reckon? A or B? Mash. B. You mash all the keys you can. You idiot, Kevin. You fucked everything. <laughs> Your Gateway 2000 PC starts making some proper mental noises. Your screen explodes and a laser shoots from somewhere within. Whatever stupid thing you just did with the computer has shrunk you to the size of a 5p coin. <laughs> the old 5p mind, but still fucking small. <laughs> This is too small for a Kevin Keegan to be, you think. How are you going to drive your car home? What's your wife going to say? Kevin, you really are the unluckiest Kevin Keegan on the planet. And now you're the smallest one, too. Do you want to go north, south, east or west? East. East, right. <laughs> You find yourself in the corridor outside your office. The carpet fibres are hard to navigate. In its... <laughs> <laughs> Why did that get a big laugh? It's a carpet. It's small. Inexplicably, a tiny Peter Beardsley is here. <laughs> You clamber over to where he is located and try and get his attention. Do you want to say, A, hey, Peter Beardsley, how come you're my size too? What gives? Or B, fancy a tiny kick around, Pete? <laughs> B, 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 fancy a tiny kick around. Peter Beardsley is not responding. He's ignoring you. What have you done now, you think? Do you, A, prod Peter Beardsley, B, punch Peter Beardsley, or C, kick tiny Peter Beardsley? C, C. See? See? So we're going for kick Peter Beardsley. Right. Turns out it wasn't a tiny Peter Beardsley. It just looked like Peter Beardsley. It was, it was actually a deformed wad of pink chewing gum on the carpet. <laughs> God, Peter Beardsley is ugly, you think. <laughs> Suddenly, over the office tannoy, a lady's voice can be heard by your tiny Kevin Keegan ears. Do you want to read that out in a lady's voice? Can Scott tell us, please, come to the gymnasium? He's left his... <laughs> <laughs> Can Scott Sellers Filofax Filofax? Can Scott Sellers please come to the gymnasium? He's left his Filofax here. Filofax, eh? Oh, Filofax. Oh, careless Scott Sellers. He'd forget his head if it wasn't screwed on. Or kill a man with his car in 2013. Look at Mark his face! But... But you know, li literally a dead human, but you know that uh, Scott Sellers will help. He's a very helpful man. He puts the U in utility player. He's incredible. Uh, the, gym the gymnasium. 
the gymnasium is east from here, by the way. Would you like to go east? Yes. Please. Good, because I haven't written anything else. Um, <laughs> you squeeze your way under the gymnasium door. Freddie Shepard is here, sat on a workout bench, eating more tuna crisps and, and reading Lorden magazine. <laughs> There is also a computer that measures performance and uh, one of those massive 90s oversized watches on the wall. A watch you have even less use for than usual because as we've already established, you are a tiny Kevin Keegan. <laughs> also in the room is a bucket. This is your final choice, all right? You can either jump on Fat Freddy's knee for some reason, B, climb the desk and jump about on the keyboard, or C, stand by the skirting board and wait for Scott Sellers. B. B? All right. Climb the desk and jump about on the keyboard. You clamber on the desk and start jumping on the keyboard willy-nilly. The PC whirs into life. The screen flashes and you instantly realize you pressed the exact sequence of uh, keys you pressed before, but in reverse. This could be your ticket to being normal-sized again, Andrew. <laughs> Keegan. <laughs> Except it isn't. The monitor explodes as before, and a great laser again, once again shoots uh, from the melting husk of metal and plastic. You are turned into a normal-sized Kevin Keegan again, except unfortunately, you've been fused to the desk, and the metal poles are now impaling your body, and there's blood pumping from where your neck used to be. <laughs> and with your last dying breath, you notice that uh, your new normal-sized leg is in the bucket. You are dead, Kevin Keegan, you massive fuck-up, and your foot is in a bucket. Let's get it out, man, get it out. Kevin Keegan, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't Andrew fantastic? Well, that went well. <laughs>